starting to fill the hard drives. I've got everything set up here. Let's go. the wrong panel in a second. Greetings and welcome to Die Dragon Die Presents the Master of Puppets episode four. I'm your demon host, Marty, joined by Mark, who has invaded my solo my solo DM myself campaign. Uh, How so dare you have D D <laughs> fun without me? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd much rather play with other people as opposed to myself. <laughs> I got another email where we were sending around emails like when uh, trying to coordinate when we're going to play again. And Mark's like, I'm available Monday if you want to play again. I'm like, yes. After the day I had of just nonstop work, I'm like, I'm going to eat. I'm going to take a 20 minute nap and then we're going to play some D&D. Excellent. Good, <clears throat> Tequila. Yes. I <laughs> <laughs> I saw Mark that one. It was like, it was like he wanted to go and sing, but he didn't want to sing anything. So yeah, tequila is the is the song, is the go to whenever Mark's around. Um, awesome, uh, Mark. How's it going? Uh, pretty good. Uh, day off today for me. So uh, lucky. Yeah. Well, they they have to give me days off eventually. Yeah. I have a, I have a day off on Friday. Um, my my company decided they're going to uh, celebrate Juneteenth. Okay, which is um, an important day in the end of slavery in the United States. All right. Uh, so yeah, so I've got Friday off, um, which is cool. What's not cool is that we decided that last week, so I had to reschedule my meetings for this. Oh, week that's yeah. Into that's... the four days that were remaining, and I was already yeah. taking one day off to go to a, like a virtual conference. So I'm basically mm -hmm. doing three days, five days of work in three days. But uh, you know, yeah, yeah. Hashtag adulting. Hashtag glad to be working. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. All, all the hashtags. Uh, hey, random one, Wither, how are you guys doing? Hey guys. Um, yeah, today was work day for me. Uh, I started playing a new uh, playthrough of Pathfinder Kingmaker because, I don't know, I was kind of restless this weekend. And so I created the characters from the Grimstone campaign <laughs> in Pathfinder. Oh my god, they are so fun to play. Uh, I'm also using the turn-based mod and the uh, magic crafting mod. And when you start crafting items right from the beginning of the game, it's... It powers you up. It, it yeah. powers you <laughs> up. So I'm, gonna, I'm also cheating because yeah, it's solo play. Who cares? Uh, and making them gestalt. And I'm just going to share with you the builds that uh, uh, that I made for them. Give me a second. I don't know where okay. I stuck them. Uh, yeah, here, here are the builds. The 20th level builds for Pathfinder Kingmaker. Um doing some weird stuff, but effectively giving them mm -hmm. 40 levels worth of classes. Or <laughs> levels. Yes. Yeah, Agony's got the scaled, scaled fist, dragon disciple, sorcerer. Slake is like a barbarian and vulnerable with a couple levels of vivisectionist and then fighter tower shield specialist. Like just, nice. just a tech, just a tank. He's so slow though. I don't have, to... <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> it takes him forever to get into combat. Uh, Capra is, is an alchemist fighter. He is so beef. He is so beefy. <laughs> Dee Dee is an elf bard, cleric of Saren Ray. Like she, her arrows suck in this game, but you know, yeah, she buffs and heals. Dugan Schmurf, the closest I could make, uh, I, I made it was a um, a kineticist. They do have that class in Pathfinder, mm -hmm. so he's an Earth kineticist. So he flings things. Yeah. Okay. And then Vivisectionist gives him like a lot of like. Um, rogue it gives him rogue yeah. sneak attack but also a bunch of uh, uh potions and stuff mm -hmm. oh my god he destroys things the sneak attack is so easy to pull off in in pathfinder kingmaker all you need is somebody in combat with the opponent you don't even yeah. need to be like diametrically opposed <laughs> 
in order to get sneak attack off. So he's from like downtown, <laughs> <laughs> sneak attacking things with. Uh, they just they just explode like they they explode. Um, <clears throat> the Earth Kineticist has got some fun powers too, where they put what well, you could you could put more burn into it, I guess, and then uh, push people with your attacks, yeah, or, or trip them. Um, Sunny is just a whack of, we're low level at this point in time, Sunny's just a whack of spells right now. Uh, and then I made, they didn't have a cow as a familiar, or as a <laughs> uh, animal companion, but they had a deer. I'm like, close enough. So the close deer enough, skips yeah. around the battle, and it's really fast, so its job is just to go face tank the nearest enemy at the beginning <laughs> of combat, so Dugenshwerf gets his sneak attack off. <laughs> oh, it, it is, uh, it is, uh, yeah. Yeah, it, it's a lot of fun. So yeah, while I'm, while we're not playing that game, know that I am, that I am uh, <laughs> exploring these characters. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it was a lot of fun. Originally, I made them in Baldur's Gate, and I, I wasn't too happy with the builds. And I'm like, do I really want to play Baldur's Gate again, all the way through to Baldur's Gate Two? I'm like, mm, hmm. nah. Uh, let's go back to Pathfinder Kingmaker. Anyway, so that was my Sunday. Um, I think we're all caught up. We have to see the cow fight. Yeah, I think the cows hit a zombie or two, but that's it. The, yeah, it was kind of off screen though. It was kind of like, yeah, yeah. and there's zombies over there. Uh, yeah, Sun, uh, Sunny doesn't get into too many fights really. He just kind of uh, assumes the rest of the party will take care of it. For I'm now. sure there will be a desperate fight at some point where where Mister is going to need to headbutt something. Yeah, uh, and and save Sunny. No, uh, no doubt, no doubt. Yep. Uh, what do we do? A recap of what happened last game. Last game was a sad game. Somebody died last game. Um, Not only did they die, they were possessed by a spirit, <laughs> and their body was absconded with. No. Yeah. Uh, last game was called On the Run. The group breaks into the crypt to retrieve Alistair's belongings. They awaken a couple of Karn whites. Lo suffers a mortal wound from one of their energy draining attacks. Fleeing from the Tomb of Initiation, the party escapes into the Under Sewers, where they encounter a duo of hunters tracking down a strange shelled beast. Chaga suggests that the party head to the abode of one Lars Abelafort, a wizard that helped Chaga understand his own mind magic years ago. Surely the wizard would provide a party a place to lay low as they hide from their respective families and plan their next move. En route to the wizard's tower, Los suffers a heart attack, and the party finds themselves amidst a skirmish between gangs of the South Wall District, namely the Executioners and the Talons. At the tower, they find that the grounds are overrun with monsters. Los begins to act strangely, including casting spells that were well beyond his power. <laughs> well beyond. And seemingly confused about holding a sword in his hands. Um, <laughs> I believe it was when you went like this. Holding it like this. It's like, <laughs> that's not a swordsman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, those, those, what, watching your face as, as I was delivering the cues was, was really fun, by the way. Uh, Mark's like, ah, oh, shit, something's happening. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a bad. <laughs> <laughs> bad. Uh, okay, so I think we left off outside the tower of Bellafort. Uh, get that so it's not crawling into the map. And you had defeated uh, not one but two gargoyles, one of which you believe was uh, fiendish, um, and a mimic that had like thousands of gold coins kind of stuffed in its mouth, and it came uh, slobbering outside of the doorway. There is absolute chaos as it looks like the proceeds of um, of looting the tower are all strewn across the grass. You've got your own treasure cart. Uh, that you uh, that is um, that has got the flail snail uh, 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 shell in it, shell, plus yeah. a lot of the armor and goods that you guys uh, uh, took out of the crypt garden district and some of the tombs that you uh, that you looted. Uh, it is sitting on the street parked up next to the tower itself. This tower, in relation to the other neighborhoods, is in the same vicinity as the other party. Um, let me show you the neighborhood map, as this is the same so, world. So we should just be grateful Slake hasn't knocked the tower down yet. 
<laughs> this is the old stacks where the Steel Rose Watch have taken uh, dominance. Uh, the Crow's Nest, the Gargs, and the Foreign Market. This the tower lies in the no man's land between these four districts, or sorry, not districts, uh, uh, neighborhoods. So you're on the edge of the foreign market, the gargs, the crow's nest, and the old stacks. Uh, this is effectively contested territory, but a wizard lived here, and it might be that the the denizens of those neighborhoods just leave the wizard alone. Uh, Chaga had mentioned that the tower itself, when it's uh, properly staffed with a wizard, uh, can summon monsters, and perhaps these things are things that were summoned here. Uh, you don't quite fully understand uh, what Chaga meant by that, but um, it does not look like there's a wizard at a home and uh, that is managing his things. But during the fight, I do remember you saw a... He opened the window, yeah. Yeah, a <laughs> wizard peeping out, of, uh, peeping out of the shutters. He is no longer looking out the window, but he did take a glance, he did take a glance at all of you. The door to the, uh, to the main floor of the tower is open uh, as the gargoyle um, who was killed while flying uh, crashed into the front door uh, and that's where we're going to uh, we're going to leave it oh yeah and Los flew away you know his, yeah his body under some sort of strange uh, possession so you're not entirely sure without looking at Los that he did die but something something bad has happened to him Yes. Um, I think we're going to start by people healing injured. up a bit. Yeah, we got injured people. Barnabas has 17 damage, and Junker's got a whopping 22. Yeah, Junker, I think, is going to summon his rat back in, because the rat has lost some of its temporary hit points. Yeah. Think, and then his rat his rat swarm shrinks back down as he goes limping over to pick up his, uh, pick up his spear or whatever he dropped during combat. Um, Barnabas will start with go, the heels. Ghost, you, can, you can see kind of padding at Junker, kind of concerned for his, uh, for his, um, uh, for his buddy. Uh, Junker's just growling at 11. his other wounds. <clears throat> so Barnabas healed himself for 11. <sighs> I don't think Lewis was of his right mind if he flew off like that. Uh, his sister's possessing him. Did you not see? <laughs> it was a bit busy with the combat here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Eyes junk. open, mate. Yeah. All right, Junker, come here. Why would she fly away? Didn't she recognize us? Uh, most likely fear. Maybe we won't let her stay in those. Mm. It's not her body, after all. It has been close to a decade since we've seen her. Five healing for Junker. I'll take it off. Uh, I think the rest will. We should probably. Maybe use the she wand. was trapped down in that horrible crypt for the last ten years. Which is a sad thought. One might go mad, and he glances over at Alistair as he says that, if they are trapped down there. Yeah, I'm not mad, you, you junk! Is what Alistair <laughs> says to him. Oh, oh, yes, thank you for noticing that I am larger than you. Ghost is He's going to chuckle a little bit. All right. So Junker is healed with three charges off the wand. Okay. Chaga's got the wand, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's five charges left in that one. Is that after after, after I after, take off? Yeah, it's after. All right. Uh, Ghost just went over and stuck a stuck an arrow into the big chest monster to making sh making sure that it was dead. Yeah, yeah. Uh... All right. Let's see if uh, your friend Lars is home. Knocks on the yeah the door the door is ajar because uh, uh or it's actually wide open because the uh, fiendish gargoyle went yeah. crashing through it crashed into what looked like uh, a collection of like silverware and a few uh, a few silver urns 
um, that was placed near the door. Uh, the creature is lying there. It looks like, like it, one of its wings is broken, but it is still breathing. Much to your surprise. Oh, I don't, don't. You need to be fucking killed. <laughs> <laughs> so you go wandering in to go coup de gras the uh, the gargoyle. I'm no, he realizes it's a gargoyle. He's like, yeah. I um, Junker, I mean, you can. Because uh... <laughs> sneak attack is better than what I got. <clears throat> yeah. So. <sighs> I guess that's four damage. <laughs> DC 14 fort save. Oh, yeah. Uh, four damage, I think, after flying into the building and crashing actually does it. All right. That, that'll do as long as it's dead. Who did that? That was Junker. Okay. With so, um,. The gargoyle crashed through the door. We're just going to rotate slightly. So this door, let me zoom out. Sure. This door here is that door on the side. Hey, oh, hang on. Oh, the map over there. Okay. There is a, um, like a, a mud room almost. It's, it's empty. There is a door off to the side. There's a large water barrel. And it looks like, um, looks like a pen where you might be able to keep an animal. Okay. Uh, it's clean, like like it's a dirt floor, but it is, or the floor is covered in dirt in areas, and there's a bit of hay. Uh, uh, it is clean-ish. There is some, there is some treasure that the the gargoyle had, um, had, uh, or or the monsters had gathered up. Um, you can hear some jostling and whispering in in the room uh, next to it, and then this ladder. I'm not sure where this ladder leads. Give me a second. Uh, floor two. It might just be up to the pen, so you can okay. cross things in. <clears throat> like, a um, hay, like a like a little hayloft or something like that above it. Uh, like like you could keep a horse here, or maybe some dogs. Uh, it doesn't look like any animals have been kept here in a long time. All right, and we hear some rustling kind of over you, here. You, you can hear some like, no, you go first. No, you go first. Uh, Barnabas is gonna put away his. And Junker is the one that. Junker was in there. Yeah, he, he killed it. With his spear. Okay. With his spear. Yeah. Barnabas is going to step back. Okay, I'll give you some. Some space here. You okay. can see where the where the overhang is. Yeah. And the posts, uh, the load bearing posts. Uh, Chaga's yeah, Chaga's wandering over, and so are the others. His voice is over there. He's putting away his club and he's pulling out his crossbow. Okay, Chaga's putting away his tower shield and he's just got his scythe in his hands. All right. Uh, Ghost has got his bow and he kind of nods to Junker and the two of them scamper up to the door. All right. Uh, Artemis will kind of follow their lead on this. <clears throat> you introduce uh, yourself. No, you would introduce yourself. I will introduce myself. Remember, I am him. No, I am him. All right, we're doing instructions to what? <laughs> <clears throat> Be warned! I am Lars Belafont, wizard of the tower. No, I am Lars Belafont, wizard of the tower. <laughs> you want us to give you a minute to figure out who you are before you open the door and introduce yourself? You hear, you, two, to... you hear two answers. One of them says yes, the other one says no. <laughs> and then there's whispered arguing. <laughs> All right, I'm going to open the door. Don't spell me. <laughs> and he opens the door. Okay. Uh, there are two spells being cast by wands at you. By two identical-looking wizards. What? I just say! <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
All right, there is a magic missile coming from a wand. Uh, two blue streaks go whapping towards you for four damage. Do you have a shield spell up? I do have a shield spell Okay, up. they go absorbing into the shield spell with a spectacular uh, light display. The other one, however, is a scorching ray from a wand. Oh, that's just fucking rude. 46. Yeah. That, that's a lot of damage at this level. <laughs> uh, you you did say exactly what you thought was going to happen, so I'm not going to treat you as flat-footed. What is your touch AC? Uh, hang on. <laughs> My touch AC. Because this requires uh, a... Uh, an attack it's, roll. It's not fantastic. Oh, I'm on shotgun. Hopefully it's better than shotgun. Touch AC is a whopping 13. Okay. Uh, this one, you do have cover from around the, from around the corner. Okay. AC 21. That's uh, a hit. Okay. You get roasted, your leg, for 13 damage. Ah, it's fucking it! <laughs> <laughs> That's right! I am the real wizard, he said. You're fucking dead is what you are! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, let me roll initiative here. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Call them the Wizards of Elephant and the uh... Oh, I gotta take off my bard spells that I use for healing. And then I'll just go to my random number sheet. Boop. Grab some random numbers. Go to the B team initiative. <laughs> okay. I get the feeling he is a sanctioned wizard. <laughs> yes, so do I. <laughs> there we go. Initiative was rolled. <clears throat> All right, Los isn't there. Uh, Barnabas, you're the first to go. Uh, Barnabas. Oh. That wizard, Lars. Why are there two of them? I guess the first thing he's going to do is try and disbelieve between the two wizards, figure out which one's maybe an illusion. Okay. What's going on? Uh, you can give me a spellcraft. Uh, two of them, actually. One for the magic missile and one for the scorching ray. Okay, so magic Scorch. missile, 28. Was definitely a real magic missile. Okay. And, and the scorching ray. Wand, and you can get a plus two from this roll because... Suspicions, 30. It was definitely a real scorching ray. It hurt you bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and both of these creatures... Cast from wands. Knowledge dungeoneering? Because doppelgangers exist? <laughs> okay, so, so you basically, those are the spellcraft checks you got in the surprise round. Yeah. To react to, well, it wasn't really a surprise, it was when you were tagged. Yeah. You're like, yeah, don't hit me with spells. And you get out by spells. Fuckers! Uh, I just said. Yeah, so what, what are your actions? So, two. Will saves versus obviously they're real. Uh, oh, and then those it, were your will saves, or those were your spellcrafts? Oh, sorry, those were the spellcrafts. Yeah, give me a give me a will save. So you're gonna will to disbelieve. No, no, they're both real. That's fine. Uh, I want my last action to be a dungeoneering. What? How could this be? Because doppelgangers. <laughs> okay, so you're thinking about doppelgangers. And the, give me. And a, they're using wands. Give me a. Oh, wizards can use ones. Uh, give me a knowledge nature. 
Yeah, you don't use shitty wands when you're a powerful wizard, though. N nature? All right. Mm -hmm. uh, 12. All right. 19. Okay, you spend your first action, because the others were reactive. Okay. Uh, uh, you spend your first action thinking about doppelgangers, and you know that they are monstrous humanoids that can change shape almost perfectly into uh, other forms. Um, if they had access to this wizard, they could have duplicated his form easily, like to an exact copy. All right. You have that. You have two more actions in the three action system. Uh, I'm going. They're still to... pointing their wands at you, arguing about who's the better wizard or who's the real wizard. Okay, where did the, the... magic missile Scorch... scorching ray? Scorching ray. Scorching ray. Let's see the distance. I'm sure you're within. You're not, you bastard. <sighs> Does he have a shield spell up? Uh, you can't necessarily tell. Um, right. Probably. Maybe. I had a lot shoot. of time to prepare. I'm just going to shoot him. Plus five. Oh, wait. AC-14. I'm sure that's a miss. AC-14 misses. It does hit something on the creature, but you don't think it's a shield spell? Like there's sort of a magical flash? All right. And then I'm going to take cover. Okay. Um, ghost. I don't know. Let's see. What are you, what's he going to do, Mark? Uh, they'll synchronize their initiative. Okay. He, he and Junker. Got it. Uh, Next. I am on the wrong sheet. Uh, Alistair. Alistair comes booting into the room just so he can take a look. Alistair is going to Hex. Yeah, the range of his hex is thirty feet, so he's too far. just out. He could get the one in the other doorway though. He starts making weird sounds and tries to hex the think the creature made it. Yeah, third level. His DC 16. Okay. There's two stupid old men in here. They look alike. Are they twins? Junker and Ghost. We're going to move in. Yep. <laughs> That's one move. Yep. yep. Oh, shit. I should have. Not even. They can see into a room that looks like a kitchen slash um, maybe laboratory. All right, Junker's still got his mutagen going. Uh, I gotta check his sheet. Junker. Uh, bonus to hit plus. There is an area of smashed glass, and I'm just gonna draw a little. Uh... Mm -hmm. uh, a few squares where there's a lot of broken glass. Six plus eight. Oh. So, Junker, AC 22. AC 22 hits uh, the wizard. Yeah. And that one, that's not good. Hey, boss. AC 10, I'm assuming misses. It is a critical miss. Just waiting for a response here. Yeah. Come on. They definitely want me to spend the six bucks a month. Or eight bucks a month. <laughs> <laughs> All 
There we go. Uh, Dex check or fall from. All right. Uh, I think he's good. No, he falls from. So this is Junker? Okay. Uh, well, uh, what's the dex uh, check, I guess? DC 20. Oh, yeah, I know he falls from. Okay, yeah, he over overextends on one of his lunges, and the mage actually steps on the spear, and he he's, he has to go down low to, to pick up the spear. He did still do 11 points of damage to the wizard. Okay, that injured the wizard. Um, Junker and Ghost are... Ghost is next. Uh, Junker is saying something in Nizumi to Ghost. Like they're having a conversation. Okay. Uh, you guys don't speak Nizumi, and, Go and Los is... We don't know where Los is. His body flew away. Yeah. Ghost is, Ghost attacks, though, or plus 13. AC 21? AC 21 hits. Uh, plus eight. Don't hit me! I'm the wizard! Oh, not 20. <laughs> <laughs> a little late for that. <laughs> yeah, both shot at the guy coming through the door. Uh, you see 22. That's a crit. Okay. So. Uh, amazing. Additional effect. Free combat maneuver. I don't think you can do that with a ranged weapon, though, can you? Oh, uh, we ruled that you can. Disarm, I guess? or Sure. So the amazing critical first is times four damage. In addition to the other hit already. All right, so hang on. The first hit did 3d6 plus two. First hit did 14 damage. The amazing... Did... For seventy six plus two. Thirty damage. Good lord. <laughs> Fifty five. Uh, he's no longer um, speaking in common. His jaw has dropped impossibly uh, wide and open. He's going. Well, that sounds like not the wizard. <laughs> <laughs> and he's starting to melt a little bit, uh, and uh, he collapses. Way to go, ghost. That's not a wizard. <laughs> <laughs> That's what ghost says. Uh, the wizard Bellafont. Well, that is because I am the wizard. You and fucking he... shot me! <laughs> <laughs> and he... Turns his wand on uh, on ghost and fires. AC sixteen touch on uh, ghost. That, mm -mm. <sighs> Might depend on if he's got the dodge feet. Beam of fire goes firing towards ghost. Uh, keep in mind that ghost and junker's AC are plus one when they are adjacent or in the same square as each I other. I did not. I did not realize that. Because of a trait they have or a feat? Give me a second. Uh, their background feat is called Swarm Scatter. For each ally who has this feat and is adjacent to you, or also in your same square, you gain a plus one circumstance bonus to AC. We need a whole party of Nizumi. As long as you have this bonus, you are immune to the swarm attack and distraction ability of rat swarms. It's called Swarm Scatter. That's awesome. <laughs> All right, so uh, Ghost's touch AC is... Uh, 16. 16? Okay, so he got nabbed. Even No, plus one, 17. Uh, no, it's, it's 15, 16, uh, adjacent to Junker. Where's the other plus one coming from? Um, I'm looking at Ghost. 10? The AC, AC is armor... No, no. Touch AC is 10. Oh, touch. His, sorry. His size is 11 with his yeah, dex sorry. plus 5 yeah, is 16. I'm looking at the wrong thing. And then plus 1 from Junker is... Yeah, 16. it's 16, 17. 17. Yeah, missed. Missed by 1. Okay. I want, uh, 
Barnabas really wants that wand too. <laughs> Stop using my treasure. <laughs> Stop using my treasure. <laughs> I am slowly ticking off charges on wand. <laughs> See, I am the wizard. Bow down before me. How dare you interrupt a wizard in his wizarding? You're getting robbed, you sap. <laughs> uh, Chaga. Going to move in. Too many moves. Is there another spell you want to cast? Like get in a position, cast a spell, then go in? No, he moves in to go see Lars. Lars was his friend. He's like, That's not you. Lars, why are you doing this? And you can see Lars is just. Pointing the wand now at Chaga. There seems to be no love between Lars and Chaga. Okay. Chaga is going to pull out his tower shield. Okay. Los isn't here. Barnabas? Uh, Barnabas is going to Bart Song. Okay. And reload his... Takes the form of Shatter, I think. Would you... <laughs> <laughs> Would you just put things in his body till he stops fucking moving? <laughs> Alistair. <laughs> We're going to have to kill Chaga's friend. <laughs> nice. Uh, Chaga says, uh, uh, Lars, please, put the wand down. We can talk about this. <laughs> Alistair is going to uh, curse. Hex. Well, he's going to get a little bit closer. Yeah. Oh, he, he seems to be fucked up a little bit. Uh, ghost? Uh, he and Junker at the same time? Yep. All right. Same tip. Ghost is going to go in. Ghost, Junker. Oh, actually, no. Ghost, Junker needs to stand up. Oh, yeah. He move over, but he can. Yeah. He, he stands. They both move. Don't harm him. He's, he's under some sort of compulsion. Says Chaga. Mm. How about we just not kill him? <laughs> <laughs> the, the two rat guys are going for the nuts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> AC, oh, AC 33. Fucking ghost is a machine of death. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you, Dark Wizard? AC 17? AC 17 is a hit? Oh, okay. oh no, sorry. AC, uh, 17 is a miss. Oh, is a miss? All right. And that's two wounds. All right. And Junker is 20 plus 9. AC 20. 20 is a hit, though. Okay, so Junker does 3, 6 plus 1. Uh, 15 damage. Whew, okay. That was Junker with the spear. Yep. Getting the wizard in the knee. Oh, plus 4 because of point blank. And 11 damage from Ghost. From the arrow, okay. And the rat is going to move closer. Look at the blood. It's not red. Says goes to Chaga. Oh? The wizard Belafont. He looks very unhappy. Let's see what else he can... What else he can do? You know what? A 46 touch attacks <laughs> pretty potent at this point. Let's see what other, what other treasure I can use. Oh, we'll just attack off another, another charge. He's hitting Ghost. Uh, it's a one, so it doesn't provoke. Uh, he needs to roll twice, however, because he is under the effect of the yes of the misfortune. AC twenty one hits a Ghost. It hits, yep. 
raking across his uh, his white haired hide for thirteen fire damage. Ow! <laughs> Goat ghost cries out at that a little bit. What do you mean? What's wrong with his blood? It's black. This is not supposed to have black blood. Laws, do you recognize me? A dare you attack a wizard? Uh, Chag is just going to go full defense while he's talking to, to Lars. Please, Lars, put down the wand. I'm not going to be able to stop what they do. Uh, based on the color of the blood, do I get a knowledge check to figure out what he is? Uh, yeah, you can see, well, you can see that there are dark droplets between him and, uh, uh, him and, um, ghost uh the mm -hmm. blood seems to be running red along his clothing but drop by the time it drops to the floor it's really really dark like it's transforming <laughs> like it's transforming okay yeah we're just, we're just gonna keep shooting him <laughs> barnabas yeah uh shoot him no nope. uh, your crossbow kind of peeked around the corner ac 19 probably misses Using a bow or crossbow? Crossbow. Oh, right. You fire, reload. Reload, fire. Uh, AC 19. This thing has an AC of 16 with an item is 18. You actually hit him on the second one. Oh, cool. Pegging Four. him off the arm. Whopping two damage. Grazing his arm. <laughs> Alistair. <laughs> he, he, he's laughing at the thing's misfortune. He doesn't have cackle or anything like that, but he's got his own light crossbow, small, uh, plus one that he picked up along Probably the way. Probably better with it than part of this is, too. Yeah, he's uh, pretty pretty fast because of how small he is, and his ranged attacks are plus eight with Bard's plus, plus nine, yeah. with plus one for the crossbow, plus ten. Nice. You see, 27 uh, would be D6 plus one, plus one for Bard's song. Okay, he pegs Lars in the uh, in the other shoulder. Ha <laughs> Take that! And then he reloads, and then he will move into this. He'll move around for cover, but he's a little bit cowardly. Okay. Ghost and Junker. Junker is... Where the rats go? Where, where does the rat go? Oh, right there. All right, there. Rat's going to move and boom, expand into a swarm over the wizard. Okay. I'm assuming the rat doesn't go into his square because that would yeah, just Just in front of him. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry. Let's get his swarm ready. So this thing has three damage and the temp hit point, I think, goes back to 15, is it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, he's, the wizard's making a high-pitched noise that... that Men folk aren't supposed to be able to make. Yep. As he as the rats are eating his flesh, Which... and the flesh is coming off wrong. Twenty plus nine. That's junker AC twenty three. It's like under his skin where there should be fibers. Instead, there are these like honeycombs of weird material. What the fuck? Fifteen damage from junker. Jesus Christ. And the rats form did another three. Okay, 36 and then 15 from Junker with the spear. Yeah. 41, 51 drops the, uh, the man. Okay. Uh, they are both, they drop their wands and they're both bubbling. And if my... Uh, my Internet Explorer was working properly. I could navigate to a file to show you what these things look like. Now it's working.
So we're going to call them gray skin monstrous humanoids. Okay. Oh, what the fuck? Knowledge what? <laughs> yep, they transform from the wizards into these gray skin things. The hair is sort of going, disappearing into the body. Uh, they are wearing some of the wizards' clothes and, and some magic items. Uh, each of them looks like they were wearing a different robe that belonged to the same man. Uh, but yeah, you're looking at them. Alistair's going, <laughs> poking at it with the, with the end of one of his crossbow bolts. I, I don't know what knowledge these creatures uh, fall under. <laughs> nature, yeah. Nature? Yep. Uh, try again. And I am going to... Uh, well, we'll see what my result is before I make any decisions. Uh, I am going to spend my uh, a um, inspiration point. Okay. So 22. Yeah, you had already thought about those, and your theory, often, more often than not, your theories are right. This is indeed a doppelganger. Oh, you fucking doppelgangers. A doppel what? Oh, they eat bits, bits of your flesh, and they can become what well, look like you. Oh, so this isn't Lars? No, you can fucking kill him. <laughs> can I? He doesn't wait for permission. Uh, he pulls out his tiny pick and is now picking at this guy's eye. Uh, left or right? Left or right? <laughs> All right, you do your arts and crafts. We're going to see if um, what else we got going around here. Well, then, I suppose, and Chaka just inverses the uh, the grip on his on his big mm -hmm. scythe and. He ends up chopping off the thing's head. I I'll be like honest. It. I don't like how they made my head buzz a little bit when they looked at me. Oh, they were. Oh, would I know that they? Twenty-two. Yeah, you? They, they. Yeah, not there. You would probably also know that they read minds, yeah. which also helps with their. Yeah, they also read your mind. Oh, helps is that them what keep you were trying to do? And he kicks at the head a little bit. The rats shrink back down. Well, uh, presence of doppelgangers does not go well for your mate. Oh. oh. Do you think something has happened to him? Well, usually they assume the form of people they kill. That way there's no chance of doubles. However, when they fuck up like these two, they take on the same form. People know something's up. Yes. I suppose if we just simply rang the door, knocked at the door, one of them would have come down. Most likely, yeah. Let's check the rest of the place. Do you know if he had wards about? Uh, I wouldn't mess with the flames atop the tower. The magical flames that help you summon monsters. Uh, no, I was just thinking, check the rest of the rooms. Maybe we find this Lars. Yes. Yes, let's do that. Uh, we should be very careful about any sort of spellbook or things, but it does look like they've got a lot of Lars's things on them. And yeah, these, these doppled beasts are carrying a lot of what looked like wizard gear, and then there's more treasure from the tower. Like, they were in the All process right. of looting this place. Um, you know what, though? Chaga, first things first. We've got a load of loot back out in the fucking street. That dead body's only going to keep the folks away for so long. Let's go bring our stuff up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, prudent thinking, my dear. <laughs> Who knew that a professor would be both practical and theoretical? <laughs> uh, you don't have to say loot twice to Junker and Ghost. They're, they're, they're hopping to it. Although Ghost now is kind of tugging at your uh, tugging at your pants for uh, uh, for some healing, he's like, "I got it." Yeah, oh, you. Go. Oh, yeah, you and me both, mate. Fuck, <laughs> his legs all charred. Alistair's, Alistair's, I'll give one for you, one for me. Alistair's smiling. Uh, plus three. So this I, is for I Ghost. I can hear a wound. All right then. 
Heal a wound. Whose wound? I want to kill Bonifacius. All right. Okay. Heal the wound. He's got his club in his hand. Yep. He begins to cast his spell, and you can hear all sorts of... Yeah, we're spellcrafting him. <laughs> Just... Whispers on the spell itself. And when he touches you, the wound is in a very painful way knitting itself together while there's a swirl of mad um, uh, of mad voices in your head. He heals you for four. Uh, Spellcraft? Okay. Uh, all right. Twenty-two. Whomever Alistair's patron is, um, it is a patron of madness and insanity. This is what we call a short-term friendship. <laughs> he grins at you. Do you feel better? Ever so slightly, but... um. Maybe I'll just get the rest. <laughs> he, he's grinning wide as grin. There he healed is. Junker for ten. Okay. No, Junker's healed. It's Ghost that got tagged. Oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, Ghost. I meant yeah. uh, Ghost for ten. And <laughs> he's, That's what he says. Heals himself for another five. Barnabas is still hurt. Did you hear? You mean your patron? Do you hear what I hear? <laughs> yeah, it explains quite a bit, actually. The song, the song. <laughs> dancing in our heads. All right. The only Listen. thing that silences is death. The only thing that silences is death. Part of it's just thinking there are there are institutions for these people. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Maybe what might silence it for a little while is you picking up fucking coins on the front lawn. <laughs> Yeah, all right. Can I pretend that each one is a wish that is now being undone? You can pretend each one is a soul that you're capturing for yourself. <laughs> he, he grins this wide grin, and with an evil little look on his face, he goes out to the front lawn and starts uh, and starts picking them up. All right, everyone, let's be clear. That child will kill you in your sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Ghost chuckles a little bit. Junker's like... <laughs> You're always not sure what that face is. <laughs> like you, it's hard to interpret. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hard to interpret from, snarl from all the time. <laughs> Ghost thinks it's funny, and uh, you're, you're pretty sure that Junker doesn't care about any of you. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, the four of you bring up your treasure cart. Um, yeah, no one's no one's touched it. But you push up the grocery cart and have to kind of hand bomb some of it up the stairs. The cart ends up getting to here, unless you're going to empty the cart and then wheel it all the way up. Uh, yeah, I don't want uh, the cart's still useful to us, I think. Okay, so you, you hand bomb a bunch of stuff. It takes all four of you. Tip of the shell, and probably. ropes and some of the equipment that originally that the rangers and the kobold had, which included a block and tackle and some ropes. It I took got all of you. Engineering. Yeah, it took all of you basically it. to to push and rope yeah. up the uh, uh, using um, uh, using kind of like a winch almost to to push up the several hundred pound uh, shell. Because we're not the strongest party yeah. either. Uh, <laughs> and then you've got the load of load of treasure plus your treasure are all kind of yeah. sitting out in the front veranda. At least anyone who comes up here is going to run into uh, Alistair and. <laughs> <laughs> all right let's have a quick look uh, let's get it in the building fuck okay so you guys are gonna start carrying yeah. the treasure into the building okay yeah. so it's 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 not 
easy. It takes you guys three hours with your manpower to move all the treasure, collect up all the coins in into the building. Yeah, you all the while, you, you could even have it. You, you could even have it in the common room if you want. Yeah, that's probably the best. Place Where are you sticking it. the bodies of the monstrous things? Uh, on the lawn, front lawn. Okay, so front lawn, front lawn. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he, yeah. Alistair can do arts and crafts with the bodies all he wants. <laughs> well, he, he seems he seems kind of bored with the bodies. Um, you got a bunch of treasure. Maybe because he's uh, he spent so much time in a crypt, he just doesn't really care about dead things, or he's just not bothered by them. He, he he does dutifully pick up all the gold pieces. He he knows value. All right, good line. All right, let's check the rest of the building now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Barnabas doesn't say it, but he's following the Nizumi. <laughs> yeah, Chaga. Should we call out for my uh, my old friend? Uh, well, I guess is. He heard anything that was going on. If he could have called out, he probably would have by now. As creepy as Alistair and fear instilling Alistair might be, he, he does stay in the back. Like, he is small. Like, he doesn't want to... <laughs> uh... <laughs> yes, the mimic would have been bad for him. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, Junker and Rat uncover a larder. Uh, that still is uh, half well stocked, although it does look like some people have gotten into it. And there are there are heavy, heavy lead glass, perhaps protected by magic uh, windows that look at the side of the tower. Okay. The tower sits on a hill, so you get you actually can see like surrounding neighborhood. Now the area that says broken glass is like glass all over the floor. Or... Yeah, there there was a very large. Um, hutch with with shelves that reached the she ceiling and it looked like somebody had broke some of the shelves or dumped plates and glasses down onto the broken glass and scattered around um yeah you, you'd have to sweep it up uh neither of the rats uh neither the nizumi are taking the time to do that they end up just going nope. to this large door over here which is a very thick door you get the sense from your architectural knowledge and so the layout of the building or what you imagine is that this is a heavy door that leads into the tower proper. Okay. Um, you do find a key on one of the doppelgangers um, that that ghost uh, puts into a keyhole and does uh, open up the door. The door reveals a for lack a very spartan area for lack of better terms it's a waiting area because there's a bench and like an unlit lantern in the corner and there's a spiral staircase that leads up at the center of the tower a door to the left hand side okay uh let's check the There should be a library over here. This is shows Chaga. Chaga spent time here. And uh, upstairs, we should find... Um, he thinks for a moment. Uh, bedrooms, and then a laboratory with a bunch of... He had parakeets at one point, and on the fourth floor is his own private study. The fifth floor is the, the top of the tower, the place you could see outside. All right, let's have a look, see. Let's finish checking this floor first. Okay. All right, Ghost goes over and has a look. I think Ghost is the one with the... Uh, trap spotting. Uh, trap spotting. I'm just going to have a look at his perception. He, he doesn't seem to see anything wrong. And with the, uh, with the ring of keys, does open up. Does open up the door into a library. Okay. Uh, some of the books have been toppled from the shelves and and made into piles, but they have, like with some with some time you could put them back. Um, there are two uh, leather stretched uh, uh, leather stretched across wooden frame chairs uh, with a little with a sort of an incense burner slash torch uh, a torch uh, slash 
um, uh, lamp kind of thing. Uh, it would also be like a, a an ashtray. Oh, okay. Ashtray on top, and then a lantern, a lantern, and then um, an incense burner underneath. <clears throat> uh, he goes over quickly to see if like is there any tobacco or anything here he can smoke because it's been a long fucking day yep. already. <laughs> Uh, he finds uh, well, I when you were moving around, you actually heard something uh, kind of through this wall. Uh, this wall is much thinner than what you believed it to be. It must be much thinner than this than than the uh, this particular stone here, as you heard uh, a jingle of chains, as well as some muttering. <laughs> And he will back away. Okay. All right, we got guests behind that door. Uh, there's no door. It is just a... Oh, behind the wall, I guess. Yep. I'm telling you, someone's behind there. <laughs> and it's just a wall. Go check if there's a door there. <laughs> Ghost is like, why me? <laughs> the two of them go poking around. Okay. You know, Junk Junker uh, uh, nudges Ghost. And you notice Junker's like got his little claw on the wall. Mm -hmm. He's pointing at something. They get into a quick like argument. Disbelieve the wall. I guess. Uh, Ghost hands Junker the ring of keys, and you notice the Junker is putting a key into the wall and turning. And you oh. hear, and you hear a tumbler turn, and like a I door. You can hear a door opening, but you don't see a door opening. It is just a masonry wall. Weapons ready, Chaga. Yeah, Ghost is now taking a step back. Junker's like, disbelieve the wall. Yeah, give me a will save. Well, I'm probably still not great at those. Ah, sorcerers. Not really good saves for anything. Plus seven will do, though. Okay, you're also being point. You're being told that something's there, so you get a plus four. Okay, that's much better. 23. Yeah, you can see it. It is like a dungeon door, like a, an iron reinforced brown door, uh, a brown wooden door, and it leads into a somewhat dirty room. Yeah, all right. Artemis has his crossbow out. He's just looking here. I chug, huh? Yeah. I don't mean to be uh, one to be dishing out responsibilities and I don't mind to dish out, but perhaps the bloke in the big thick armor article first. Colossal zombie. <laughs> Roper. No, nope, you can hear the buzz of flies. Mm -hmm. And there's a bit of there's a bit of a funk from around the corner. <sighs> oh, um would I, I have been able to go pick up the uh that wand of scorching ray. Uh, you you guys have that treasure. You had a few hours. I don't know if uh, you want if you had the ability to. Uh, I'm just double checking. I know I planned on taking. I don't have it. Never mind. Next level, I will have it. You you can spellcraft with just. You can <laughs> no, no, use magic devices. Okay. What I was gonna. Okay, you hear this clack, uh, like a bone clattering together. The shift of chains. Is somebody there? Why am I the one doing this? 
Okay, you step into, well, Belafont had some sort of secret chamber. Is that there is a humanoid skeletal creature in wizard robes um that is chained to a wall you can see that there are two large manacles that lead uh that are basically chaining um around the creature's throat and that are going into these weird containers filled with magical liquid that is glowing uh, okay. There's also a, a normal set of manacles kind of like strapping the creature in. So he's kind of, he's, he's, he's sort of like uh, um, caught in two places and then and then is stapled to the wall. Uh, this guy looks suspiciously a lot like a very rotted version of Lars Belafont. If Lars was the one that the doppelgangers were pretending mm -hmm. to be. Uh, there is a large box and some other tools and things around. Well, I guess there wouldn't be tools within reach, but uh, there is a large trunk that looks like it's uh, open. And this thing is animate and definitely talking. Is somebody there? Oh, you got visitors. Chaga! Mm -hmm. Chaga stumbles over and spends a few rounds trying to look through... Uh, your friend, uh, Lars, have you talked about literifying himself? I've never seen this before. <laughs> Lichify. Who are you? Come closer. I don't see very well. Uh, it's not typically your kind now, is it? <clears throat> would you mind removing my restraint? I believe I likely would. Uh, knowledge, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> yep. Uh, religion? Religion. Thirty-one. Uh, you believe that you are looking at well. They say that no two liches are alike. But. <laughs> and that the method of becoming a lich is deeply personal or, or very specific to each wizard. There are a lot of stories of failed. <laughs> okay. Um, lichdom. If he's a lich, you do not want to take off his whatever is restraining him. No. Nope. Um, you're looking at not... you're looking at either a lich that ha that is somehow bound himself by accident in the process of becoming a lich, or you're looking at somebody who was bound and then, but then died and it triggered what they've been planning. So the the the. The restraints on him. Yes, they are definitely more mundane constraints, but it, it is the chains that are going to these large pools of liquid. One is That's more in a, in a burn, somehow. and then there's another one uh, that is more like a big pool and a big uh, and a big bat. Uh, there is magic that every once in a while pulses from the lich figure into the pools. No Jarkana. Or planes, or I don't know. Um, Religion. If I... well, you you'd have to identify to know what the what the magical qualities of the chains are. Oh, spellcraft. Spellcraft with a detect magic would allow you to do this. All right, he, he will do that. Okay, the DC is fifteen plus spell level, or fifteen plus caster level. Okay. 31. 16th level magic. Okay. Yep. Um, these chains are, what do you call them? Um, Phylacteries? Nope. 
uh, are very specific dimensional shackles. Okay. They have magic runes across them. They are made of cold iron. Normally dimensional shackles are meant to keep people from dimensionally traveling, like via teleports. Mm -hmm. You think with you think that this man used the idea of dimensional shackles to keep his soul here beyond death and rechannel it back into his body. Okay. So what would happen if I destroyed the shackles? Um, there's also a good chance the shackles, the way that they're shackling him, are keeping him from casting spells. They are around his throat, and you think that he's he's done something so that uh, these shackles might be also be wizard shackles, like they like huh. they would keep you from doing spell casting. So I'm guessing someone done this to you. <laughs> uh, Lars, is that you? You look different with my eyes, Chaga. Oh, it is you. I didn't recognize you without the face, beard, the beard, and the skin. <laughs> Do not fear, Chaga. I am now much more powerful than I was before. I will find all sorts of great creatures here with this tower. Oh, yes, great creatures. <laughs> he looks at Barnabas, and I just want to uh, copy pasta something about this adventure. Okay. Uh, the complication to this adventure is hilarious. Unwanted guest. <laughs> the real boss arrives. <laughs> Nice thing about the real boss is uh, we don't have to fight him on today. <laughs> so, um, did someone do this to you? Yes, and he was weak. Oh, and who might that be? Lars Belfort. Word here, Chaga. <laughs> so you're not Lars anymore. Who are you? I am his better. Lars was a maggot, and I am the moth. Oh, a moth. Yes. Chaga's uh, like looking very frightened and wants to leave the room. Yeah, all right. Just give me Would a second. Would you care to let me out of my restraints? Yeah, not just yet. Um, excuse me. St sticking close to the wall. Looking okay. at that chest. The, the, the creepy eyes of the, of the creature follow you. He's looking for a horde a of flies eating. Like, there is still flesh on this guy's body, and it, it looks like the flesh is no longer needed. Or at least parts of it, and uh, there are there are horrible, like bloated flies that look like they're they're eating this this creature's charming <laughs> former life. Yeah, it doesn't doesn't smell too good in here. Uh, huh. You do see that um, the other creatures were in here. Like there is a a weird footprint in some of the filth that had leaked off of this altar. Yeah. Uh, Barnabas is looking for notes or research. Okay, so you open up the chest. Yeah. Uh, no, you find um, um, the accoutrements of of like a a dungeon. You find manacles of various sizes, 
some whips, uh, some rope. All right. Um, some pliers and torture devices. We'll be back. Come on, check out. Yeah. <laughs> Get the fuck out of there. As, as much as the restraints allow, <laughs> Achaga, uh, it is not what I expected. Yeah, what did you no. find? Is there any treasure in there? Uh, no, there's a fucking lich in there. What? Uh, it's uh, undead. Lichen? Um, <laughs> says, uh, says no, okay. No, it's um, the wizard went and... Uh, oh, and, can I see? Can I see? Yeah, just stay away from him and don't touch nothing, all right? Okay, so the, the three of them go in and gawk at the lich for a while. <laughs> Austin is laughing. What are you laughing at, boy? You can hear the jingling of chains like Alistair is making it mad. Chaga, All right, don't antagonize him. Chaga leads Alistair out. He died. <laughs> he died all tied up. What a stupid. Yeah, well, we probably meant to do it. He's not the first to fail at making himself a proper lich. Let me out of here, and I will. All right, let's just close this. the door. And <laughs> <laughs> you still hear Lars prattling on. Oh, he opens the door back up. Uh, you got keys for them, Chains? Yes. Where are we going to find them? You will find them in the bedchambers that I no longer require. All right, then. Right back, then. <laughs> Closes the door. Uh, let's go talk elsewhere. <laughs> Yeah. Closing doors as you go. All right. So Chaga, can... Chaga looks like he's he's gone like a, a different shade of pale. <laughs> all right. So liches is a problem, all right? Uh, they will probably kill us. On the other hand, I like this tower. It is dangerous, but if he's kept in there and no one lets him out. Right. We should at least... He looks around at all the treasure and gear. Uh. We could rest here for a while. You heard him. He doesn't need his bed anymore. <laughs> Alistair's giggling. The, the two Nizumi having a conversation in Nizumi. They don't seem very concerned, or at least they don't know that they should be. Okay. All right, he's going to... All right, let's check the rest of the place. See what's what. We'll make a decision after that. Fucking niches. There he is. You heard him. He wants to bind things to the tower. Yeah, I'm guessing the things he wants to bind from this day forth are not the kind of things you want near the tower if we're living here. We don't want to let him out. No. I think the only way to get rid of him, though, might be to let him out. He's gone and fucked up what he's supposed to do. It's the chains that keep him from dying. They also keep him from casting spells. However, once you remove the chains, you can kill him. <laughs> we turn this adventure into living with a lich sitcom. <laughs> <laughs> Are you letting me out today? <laughs> With laugh track and everything. Uh, funny. <laughs> I like it. Who else can boast that they have a lich in their basement? Yeah. Says Alistair. I can actually see that sitcom. <laughs> Why doesn't she like me? Because you're a loser. <laughs> Just this voice from nowhere. Fucking Skeletor voice. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, hang on. My dog's going stupid. <laughs> Do it. All right, worst case scenario, we just never open that door again. We need a, a good name for Lars Belafont in his lich form. Skinner Lars. Uh, as in, what does he call himself? Malafont. <laughs> Malafont? That's yeah. awesome. Mal uh, Malafont. Malafont the Dreadmoth. <clears throat> you can also say Malafont. I like that one. Formerly Lars Belafont. <clears throat> Yes, let's have a look around the tower. All right. Um, you hear that, Alistair? You leave the lich alone. <laughs> <laughs> we save him. We save him for, for, for mean tricks later. Yeah, all right. You just remember who he's coming after first. He gets out of there. Yeah, don't worry. Where do you think I lived beforehand? I knew what to leave alone and what I could play with. <laughs> all right. The smart undead are the ones that can see you. The dumb ones can't. Who do you mean by that? Are you telling me you can... Spellcraft hide from undead. <laughs> yeah. That's the effects of hiding from undead, right? Yeah. Yeah. But he you, he's he's describing it in a way like it's just like everyone. It, like everyone. Uh, no, that's not the way it works. Are you telling me skeletons and zombies just can't see you? Oh, you're you're not an uncaster. Uncasters have their secrets. <laughs> you got a tattoo? No. Sense motive. <laughs> Uh, sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, my sense motive on Barnabas. Twenty-eight. <laughs> uh, I can beat that, but it's just really unfucking likely. Nope, twenty-one. No. All right. I'll figure it out. Something's giving you hide from undead. <laughs> The rats are bored now of this conversation, and they're heading upstairs. Oh, let's not let them get ahead of us. Yes. Yes, we are in a lich's tower, remind everyone. Yeah, you brought us here. <laughs> this ghost. <laughs> uh, uh, well. <laughs> uh, it's a valid point. <laughs> All right, on the, uh, on the second floor... Uh, there is no staircase that leads down, curiously. There doesn't seem to be a basement. Um, okay. You do go up a floor. There is a door that leads out into an area where there are um, two bedrooms and two storage areas. One of the storage areas looks ransacked, and the other one has a still serviceable door in it, and uh, there is a really, really old... Oh, sorry. There's a really, really old bedroom. Like, it doesn't even have a mattress. And then another bedroom that was used more recently. And I'm saying, like... Guest room type. Maybe Chaga stayed in this one. Oh, yes, yeah. I stayed in this in this room here. It doesn't look like anyone's been here in a long time, though. Everything's dusty. It's been ransacked by the doppel creatures. All right. Who knows how long Belafont has, has been, been trapped in his own dungeon. Long enough for... 
neighborhood monsters to come and realize that nothing was guarding the treasures within. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's what happened. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, you, watching watching for magic and uh... yeah, the larder did still have like foodstuffs in it, but it was the foodstuffs that um, uh, doppelganger. So, yeah. Some of them, some of them was eaten by the doppelgangers and by maybe maybe by the uh, the mimic and the uh, gargoyles. Um, the preserves were still good. Any of the vegetables were gone and rotted a long time ago. Uh, this storage area does you do get the sense, Barnabas, that a lot of stuff was kept here, but has long since moved away. Like there are empty bottles and packing crates and hooks along the walls where you could have put stuff. Uh, right. You know that the process of becoming a lich is a very expensive one, like on the order of like a hundred thousand dollars, a hundred thousand gold pieces, kind of thing. Fuck. So he may have. You're like, ah, shit. <laughs> this is where the money was. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, if only we'd gotten here before we'd started the process. What do you mean? Oh. It's course a king's ransom to turn yourself into a lich you would be a fuck it up fuck it, can we sell it says ghost no you can't sell a fucking lich <laughs> well, we could probably get someone from the church to come kill him on the other hand we'd lose the tower can't, can't have that uh, give me another knowledge Arcana or knowledge religion? Knowledge Arcana is my best. You're talking about killing a lich now. Plus. You may want to roll good on this. Then I will use an inspiration point to see if I can get fucking 40. <laughs> no, so uh, I got 36. Arcana? What's that? This is Arcana? That's Arcana, yeah, 36. Okay. Let's see, Chaga's putting his, he aids. So 38. And then, uh, I think, Ghost, maybe? <laughs> I think Ghost has Knowledge Arcana because he's a Eldritch uh, Archer. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, he's good plus 90, auto aids. Uh, all right, so we're at 40. <laughs> all right, you are aware that Liches will just simply return because of a special item that they create called a phylactery. Mm -hmm. Their soul will just basically go into their phylactery and then they'll reform a certain amount of time later after being destroyed. Yep. If you destroy the phylactery, however... Don't you still have to kill the, the lich, Yeah, though? then you still have to kill the lich, yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We need to find his phylactery if he's got one. If he got that far, he must have. It might be the chains themselves. Oh. Then he could be destroyed. Right. No, I've got an even better idea. We hold the phylactery over a flame and we make it do our bidding. Yeah, that's a very dangerous proposition, child. <laughs> He's not going to blame me, little old me. He's kind of scuffing this in the, the ground <laughs> with one of his feet. I think he might blame us all, to be honest. <laughs> so... All right, let's keep an eye open for this phylactery. It could be, could be a gem, could be a box. There'll be arcane symbols all over it or within. Yeah, yeah. Assuming right. it's here. Yeah, I hadn't. I suppose it's possible. It is possible he'd been a lich for a time before he got stuck in them chains. 
Well, wouldn't he want to have his phylactery nearby as he was being turned into a lich? Yeah, well, if I was a lich, I'd want it nearby, but not at my residence, because that's the first place people start looking. I wonder what it is. Like I said, it could be damn near anything. But given that it takes damn near a hundred thousand gold pieces to pull it off, so uh, pretty valuable. Unless it's warded away from detection, it, it would be a highly magical thing, would it not? Uh, would it be, or would it be like an artifact? Knowledge Arcana. No, no, you, 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 you rolled about the art uh, uh, forty for your artifact, or sorry, oh, for your um, roll of phylacteries. Yep. Um, it would be intricate of some sort. Like it would have, it would have magical writings on it. Typically, although you're right, it could be any item. Um, unless they the lich took insane precautions, um, it could be detectable. <clears throat> Yeah, be... if it was a nail on a floorboard, it would be like, like a beaming, yeah. <laughs> a beaming <laughs> magical nail. Um, the item will have the caster level of the item when it was created. All right. And you're 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 betting like archmage, uh, uh, liches might not have accidentally tied themselves up in their dungeon. <laughs> 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 yeah yeah I'm, I'm guessing he's not the brightest of liches just based on his circumstances now so maybe just maybe he didn't hide his phylactery proper luck all right, we're going to go up to his laboratory then. It's a good place to look. Okay. So you take a quick look around at all the bedrooms and the storage areas. Yeah, you could probably convert these all to bedrooms if you really wanted to. Yeah, that's probably what we're going to end up doing. Pass by some shelving. Uh, all this is all this area on level two has already been looted by the uh, yeah the gargoyles, mimic, and uh, doppelgangers. Uh, you go up to the third floor. There is one more floor above the uh, the third floor. Okay. Um, the third floor is a little more open. It is a wizard laboratory. Could also be an alchemist laboratory. Um, a little bit of both. There are all sorts of empty cages. Like at one point in time, he may have experimented on uh, upon or did things. Uh, to animals. There are no animals left in the cages. The cages could house everything from rats all the way up to sizable, medium-sized beasts. Okay. Uh, you do see that there are some um, serviceable lab equipment. It's actually pretty nice. Not bad, not bad. And you find two tanks of that strange liquid that he's got downstairs. Oh, okay. Um, it looks like he's either created too much of it or had extra or... Uh, uh, knowledge or can it know what it is? Or is it magical? Uh, yes, it is magical. So can I identify it? Uh, yeah, give me a spellcraft and then a either a craft alchemy or a uh, spell... Sorry, a spellcraft or a craft alchemy. Uh, we're going to go with... Spellcraft. Uh, 30. Okay. Um, these are vats of mercury mixed with unholy water. Okay. He is he is 
the at least those are the ingredients of the potion 30 um it's not a specific magic item but he's found a way to make those two things mix like it should be like oil and mm -hmm. water instead it's yeah. kind of like a mixture um hmm. there may be other things mixed into it and you you likely you believe that it has something to do with uh the ritual downstairs uh mercury you know has been used in uh, religious rituals and has to do with uh, it's also called quicksilver mm -hmm. um, with the movement of souls and then unholy water yeah uh, is, know what that's for. is uh, perhaps allowing for the corruption of his soul so maybe quickening the corruption of his soul mm, maybe. like he's somehow acted as his own he condemned his own soul and quickened the process on his own. I see. So, yeah, all right. Barnabas will do research into maybe we can destroy him without letting him out by just messing with the formula. <laughs> 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 Here's some holy water and mercury. Enjoy that for a while. <laughs> making holy water and mercury and making you take a bath in it. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, I think, a good idea, quite frankly. <laughs> what is it? Looks special. Alistair's, like, listening to it. I like how it sounds. Can you drink it? Yeah. Then you'll die, but you can drink it. <laughs> it's called mercury. Surprised you don't know that being an urn caster. I know what it is. Mm -hmm. Lots of spells need mercury. Lots of spells. Oh, yes, they do. Name five. Spells, he says. <laughs> Goes over and starts kicking, starts kicking a cage. Ah, uh, you got lots to learn, lad, lots to learn. All right. Uh, nothing particularly magical here other than the... Uh... Uh, there is a, uh, a lab, like a, a yeah, master, yeah, a, lab. a masterwork uh, lab. All right. All right, everything seems safe here. Let's check uh, upstairs. The stairs do continue to the roof. Um, after you get to the fourth floor, there is a private study for the master of the tower. You can see it has a uh, a small like telescopic device. I don't know what that is. What is that? I don't know. Let's blow. Maybe a hole? No. Wouldn't be a hole in the floor to look down your animal cages. No. I don't know what that is. Like a bundle. Just a of bundle something. of something. Yeah. Yeah, just a bundle of stuff. Uh, there are some more. Um, uh, selected tomes and knickknacks and tchotchkes along the uh, along the wall. There is a private area that looks less of a um, uh, less of a laboratory and more of a a, a reading desk, and then a uh, um, a shelf full of spell components. This is definitely a wizard's domain. Okay. Uh, a lot of this has already been looted. Yep. We'll do say that you do find. Uh, it was he was a wizard, so we'll say five hundred gold pieces worth of magic ink and five hundred gold pieces worth of spell components. I will add that to your party treasure. Party treasure.
uh, using your detect magic, you do um, note that there is a magical ward on this door. Okay. I uh, believe that it is his bedroom on the other side. That's where I put it. I think the fact doppelgangers didn't get through. You can try and break it if you're feeling confident, but if you're not, leave it. Break it? What do you mean? Oh, these two. Sneaky types. See if Ghost even can see it. Do you talk magic? Traps. Uh, DC is 25 plus spell level. You get the 27. I see something here making door hard to open. You need, you need, uh... That's an arcane lock, I got you. Wizard word. Yeah, we need a knock spell. Um, give me a spellcraft, Bar Barbus. As you were looking at the door. Oh. Thirty-two. There's something else there. There's also a faint conjuration. Ah, there's something else there, too. It's a conjuration spell. Like right, me a trap of stone kind, try to open it, summon something. Bolt your head off. Alistair is looking through the telescope. He got distracted. <laughs> Jeffrey Dahmer with AEDD. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna kill. Oh, what do we got here? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know if anything here it looks like a phylactery. Behind that door. Sure of it. But it can wait, because he's been stuck down there for some time. Right hand. What do we do now? Now we count our treasures, rest, heal up, figure out what we're going to do next. <laughs> Alistair was actually not spying on the stars, he was spying on people down below. <laughs> Okay. Uh, sounds like you guys are settling in a little bit. Mark? Yep. Let me um, put some treasure on your treasure sheet and figure out some XP. Because I think you guys want a little bit of downtime is what I'm hearing. I'm hearing yeah, because that was awful. That was an awful couple days. Let's be honest. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Get the wizard's gear. <laughs> We're gonna live with a lich for a while. <laughs> so this is coming down. All his, right. catch, his catchphrase for the sitcom is gonna be "When I get out of here." <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you find this is all the treasures that you had from last time. Um, there was some loot outside the tower, which is wealth. The mimic's treasure, he just had 5,000 gold pieces total kind of spilled throughout the room. It looked maybe the last of Belafont's money. 
That's some pretty great treasure. <laughs> um, the stuff that was stuck to the side of the shell of the flail snail was a ring of protection plus one and a rune stone of power, which is like a pearl of power for spontaneous casters. Okay. The nice. giant, the giant's cup, is something that you stole from the, um, uh, or that the rats, I think, stole from uh, the uh, the tomb of war. Once per day, the metallic cup leaks a tincture into a liquid. The tincture provides the following effect: uh, for one hour, you gain a plus one alchemical bonus to natural armor, a plus two alchemical bonus to strength, and a decrease of speed by five. You also take a minus four penalty to reflex saves as your like your cords are kind of tight. That's pretty cool. You find something called the Manual of War, which once per day a fighter that studies the manual can switch up one of their fighter bonus feats for another combat feat. That's awesome. Oh. Uh, a bunch of potions, which came from the tower. The two wands, the one that you wanted to look at with a scorching ray wand after the battle had 12 charges left in it. Charges, yep. <laughs> <laughs> there was a plus one, plus one quarter staff, an amulet of natural armor plus one, a cloak of resistance plus two, a knowledge, a headband of vast knowledge with knowledge planes in it. Mm -hmm. A pearl of power, a ring of protection plus two, which was making one of the doppelgangers harder to hit. You find more spell components in Magic Ink. Uh, Bellafont's Ring of Summoning. This one will require a roll to, to identify. All right. Even with the identify spell? Yep. All right. Plus 41. Okay. When worn within 100 feet of Bellafont Tower... The arc, an arcane caster can spontaneously cast summon monster spells, converting the, either their prepared or their spontaneous spells within the casting time of full, a one full round action. The flames of the tower must be lit, and the monster summons must conform to the alignment of the flames. That's awesome. That's an awesome one. This ring is extremely magical it's like probably radiating strong conjuration if you guys were looking for an item that the wizard was not wearing it one of the doppelgangers had it in his pocket all right holy crap all right and then you find, like, an early spell book. Like, this book could not have been the Lich's spell book. Okay, this is... Uh, it does go up to fourth, though. Yeah. Wizard's first spell book. <laughs> like, an early phase spell book? Yeah. You, you don't know where his other stuff is. Um, and it's then... just a spell book that has... Lars plus Loretta and a big heart in it because it's from these. And like, then I already oh. started divvying up some of the junk treasure, like some of the small stuff, uh, okay, into into people's uh, into people's piles. But I guess we could, you know, divvy this up further. It sounds like you're interested in grabbing the wands. Uh, well, the the yeah, I guess. Okay. Um. Plus two cloak of resistance. Uh, not who, who has anyone got really crap saves? I know Junker's got a crap will save. Uh, you give that to Junker, or does he? Because he's a druid. That's right. Uh, can't have a crap will save. I might be thinking a ghost. Oh, he's got decent saves. It's a ghost. Ghost has a shit will save. And he's dangerous. Yeah, give it to Ghost. Okay. Um, the Manual of War sounds like it's a thing that you are going to keep. I don't think any of you are fighters. 
Uh, isn't Chaga a fighter? He's first level fighter. Well, and I, still... and he won't switch out his toughness feet. Yeah, I don't blame you. <laughs> okay, uh, maybe we sell that, or maybe we'll just. I'm gonna put that under plot difficult to sell items. All uh, right, Manual of War. You've got the gold breastplate and the masterwork adamantine scale mail, plus that weird flail snail shell that are probably like actual little mini quests to go and deal with. Uh, a ring of protection plus two. That's nothing to sneeze at. Uh... Chaga, I think, wants that, given that he's a the guy yeah. who wanders into melee. He does, and I... I, yeah. Let's give you the runestone of power, then. Sure. And there's a pearl of power that we can... Uh... Talk to someone else. Prepared casters. Chaga's half a prepared caster, I believe. Give me a second. He's got two levels of cleric, and then Ghost is a prepared caster. I think Ghost should get that one. All right. Okay. Um, Pearl of Power. So I, I'm just cl clustering these into oh, yeah. groups right now, and then yep. I'll pa copy and paste the... Uh... Yep. Junker is also a prepare caster. Does he have any decent first level spells that you'd want to see him jam? I don't know druid spells that well. Uh, I'll be honest, so I couldn't really say. Uh, reduce animals, the second level spell, which we no. will we will definitely use that. <laughs> Thanks, Fox. Uh, all right, a plus one quarter staff. Sounds like a sell. Yeah. Masterwork dagger. Does Alistair need a dagger? Is it small? It, it, oh, he needs a small dagger. That's right. I think Alistair uh, picked up some stuff along the way. Like, uh, don't feel bad if he doesn't get much because he picked up a light crossbow, small. He's got his yeah, non magical right. uh, mithril chain shirt and his. Um, Alistair's circlet of persuasion is also a thing that you guys helped him get. So, yep, he's fine. Uh, it's a small. Uh, all right, Barnabas is going to take the masterwork. Uh, small dagger. Masterwork dagger. Yeah, or masterwork dagger. Yeah, sorry. All right. Ring of Protection plus one. Let's give it to... Ghost or Junker. Yeah, sure. Uh, we'll, put, we'll give it to Junker. There's a headband of vast intelligence? Jeez, okay. Yeah. Well, Barnabas is keeping his mouth shut for that one. <laughs> oh, you don't want that? All right, I'll wear that. Oh, <laughs> it was so under my hat. So you're, you're claiming that? Is that what you're doing? Yeah. I, I, just, I just noticed it. I was eyeing down like, hey, wait a minute. Well, I'll put that under Barnabas. That's fair. Yep. Uh, Amulet and natural armor? Uh, whichever of Ghost or Junker got the Ring of Protection, the other one gets yeah, the natural I think, armor. Yeah, I think Ghost will get that one. Um, the Giant Cup. Oh, yeah. Um, it doesn't really benefit. It might benefit. Give it to um, Chaga. Sure, he'll, he'll use it. Yeah. <laughs> the minus four on reflex saves is pretty good. That's pretty harsh. Yeah, it's like, are you sure it's not a dragon? Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna create a library for your for your group. Uh, yeah. I'm assuming you're not. Uh, well, no one casts wizard spells. Although I haven't done the exercise of looking through which spells are actually uh, uh, mage spells. Like some of them. So, so are we? Are we doing the, you can transfer to formula if it is an alchemist extract? 
Uh, that that is also a thing. Okay, because I am going to be taking levels in Alchemist. So. Barnabas. Barnabas will yes. He what, is. He... What, what weirdness is this, Mark? It's not weirdness. It's actually. He's gonna be. He's gonna be the knowledge guy. He's gonna be. Oh, next... you're doing it for cognatogens. Yeah. Yeah. He's gonna go. Are you, mind... are you, are you gonna go? Alchemist or vivisectionist or uh, uh, mind chemist. I always think of mind freak whenever we. Do. I know. <laughs> Chris Angel. Ah, Mike. <laughs> okay. Yeah, two just just two levels, so I can double my int modifier on all knowledge checks. What are you doing with Belafonte's Ring of Summoning? Um. I would like to point out that I have the most spontaneous spells. Oh, all right. I don't mind you using it. Summon monsters aren't quite my thing. Yeah, anything that puts me between a blade is something I'll use. <laughs> all right. Okay, well, it just it goes into your pile. Yeah. Beep. I'm it not. Does, it does mean you'll have to stay here. Well, no. If I ever leave the place, is I leave it with you guys, or whoever's here. Maybe sell it to them. I'm just gonna take a stab at putting some potions on. Sure. Cats, Grace, and Blur sound like ghost things. Yes. Uh, Barnabas got the Tongues potion. A healing potion will stick on uh, Alistair. I already know the first thing I want to buy, too. Potion of Fly. Who's getting that one? Potion of Fly. We'll put that on... You know what? We're going to put it on, on Alistair. So you can fly around it. Just, just stay away from the monsters. Fly up, scare them. Okay. Don't get hit. <laughs> uh, Chago wants to keep off to the side the silver seal of the Balafont family. He doesn't want to sell that. Sure. He's going to keep that as, like, this may come in handy. Sure. Uh, does anyone not have a Masterwork Dagger that is medium-sized? Uh -huh. That is medium sized. I just don't know. Chaga's got one. Size people are Chaga and Barnabas. Barnabas has one now. Chaga, I don't know. Yeah, he's got one. Okay. A Masterwork right, so... Light Crossbow. Do you need one? I have a Masterwork Light Crossbow. Okay. You know what? Those are always useful. I'm just going to put those as spare. Sure. Spare gear. It's the dagger and crossbow you under your pillow. <laughs> um, like backpacks and scroll cases and spell component pouches. Those are things mm -hmm. that are. Under spare gear. Okay. It looks like we've got leftover magic ink and spell components. Uh, there are people that use those in this party. So that is also going under. Maybe we'll have a section like just alchemy. in the lab. Yeah, yeah. yeah, alchemy in the lab kind of section. Alchemy and consumables at the tower. Yeah, Ghost is probably going to nick from that every time he needs to kind of spell, and then I, I assume Barnabas will do that as well. Yeah, for his formula, yeah. Okay. Uh, Los originally was going to get the Wand of Mage Armor, Who's, who's that going to go to now? He's got his armor. Where's armor? Where's armor? Uh, I guess Barnabas, because he's the only one who doesn't wear armor. Okay, you're getting three wands incoming. All right, so yep. I'm going to... So Barnabas, you've got Blessed Bandages, a Potion of Cure Light Wounds, the Skill Shard, which gives you a plus five on a praise, single use for ten minutes, the Charm of Counter Song, which you may need a write-up from me to do. Okay. Originally, the party didn't have a bard, but they now they now do. Uh, three wands, magic missile, scorching ray, mage armor, the rune stone of power, the headband of vast intelligence plus two, the Belafont summoning ring, and the potion of tongues. 
times. And I'm just gonna, not too shabby. I'm just gonna toss this at the bottom of your sheet and sure. Feel free to move that around. Yeah, I will do that. Yeah, that's a pretty good haul. Uh, a no ghost kidding. is getting a blessed bandage, five oils of magic weapon, the cloak of resistance plus two, pearl of power plus one, amulet of natural armor plus one, a couple of potions. He is happy with that. 